Hi, welcome back. Okay, what I'm going to be doing now is drawing out some parts, and I'm drawing these out basically just so that I can um, go around this piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my top view over here. <coughs> now we can see where this is, obviously. Uh, what I want to do now is just click my cylinder brush, and here we can see our original brush that we used in order to make this tower. So I'll just kind of fit it over the top here. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just hit the scale button and scale it out. Not in, not. Stop being a naughty scaler. There we go. Okay, so this is the actual shape our outside should be and failed to be quite badly. Could be worse. Now what I've done is I've just scaled up this so that it's going all the way around the outside of the stairs here, as you can see. Okay, so obviously this is the original size that the scale was. And what we can do is we can use this as a reference now for actually putting our geometry down and working out sizes that we need to play with. So if I go over here to my uh, asset browser, so view browser window, content browser, Okay, and what I'm going to do is just get a proxy for the moment. Okay, so just something that I can throw down as a corner piece. There we go. That'll do for the moment. Now, that's where the front is, so I'm going to take this over here. And I want to line it up where these corners are, so I'm going to have one here. Now you notice this is actually going to be slightly more precise than that one is. And then Alt and drag to there. Just get that lined up too. There we are. Now if I take this and this, not that, this and this, no. Try again, that and that. And I'll just do this in my full screen view here. Hold down Alt and drag. There to there, like so. And then if I just Alt, sorry, Control and click here, and Control and click here. And then just do a quick Alt and scrape 90 degrees. I can now move these into the correct place as well. Like that. Okay, so now we have these marker points, which are important, because obviously they're going to show us where the edges of this tower are and where they're supposed to be. Okay, let's drop back now into the perspective view. Oops, that's a tear off floating copy. Useful, but not what I need at the minute. Okay, now remember, these are just you know, temporaries, just so that I know exactly where it is I'm working and what I'm doing. Now what we need to do as well is judge the height. So if this is one floor, then I'm going to use this again as a marker to let me know where the top of this floor is. And for this I'll just drop down into my front viewport just for a moment. No, wait, my side viewport because it's technically my back. Alright, so this is where the floor meets, just there. Okay, so now I've got enough markers that I'm basically able to go and start doing some work with this. And I can hide my brush tool for the moment. I can bring it back any time I want just by hitting B. But there's enough here for me to be going on with. Okay, now I'm going to take these four pieces here. Hold Alt and Scrape and these are going to become my basically my easel, my canvas, whatever you want to call it, yeah? And I'm going to grab a secondary light just over here simply because it'd be useful to additionally illuminate these pieces a little bit. So I can see the different effects that lights and shadows will have on it because there's, even though it's not calculated the lighting for the level, it's going to have calculated it enough for a preview of this piece, if you kind of 
get where I'm going with this. Okay then. So what I'm going to do next is get a little toolbox of parts that I want together. So if I go into my content browser, I close it a lot simply because I'm only working on one window and it's not really enough for what I need. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way at the top. I'm just going to pull out a selection of things that might be useful. So that will be useful. And that will be useful because we've already used it before, so we have continuity. This will definitely be useful. Don't want that. Now, obviously, if you're working with your own assets, you're going to have to choose things differently. But I'm demonstrating this using the assets that come with UDK, simply because everyone's going to have them. It's like using the default version of 3ds Max. Not everyone has the plugins. I like this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get much use out of it, so because it's quite a big part. Let's just get some bits out, though, anyway. You can never tell later on, I might have some use for it, then again I might not. Let's put that there as well. That's a nice piece. Okay, and here we have some parts that will be useful, definitely. That as well. And I'm going to grab a window because they'll give us some rather useful light, obviously. So let's see. Oh, and uh, I quite like that as well. This little light here. Let's have a look a bit further down. Nearly done. Don't worry, we're nearly done for the moment. So many meshes in this. Spoilt for choice, aren't we? There we go. Right then, now. What I'm going to do is, in the next bit, I'm going to assemble these into something that's going to be useful. That's going to obviously fill in in between these spaces here. So let's just move these out of the way so our tool area is clear. Now if you ever worked with me in the past when I've done a kind of kit bashing job, you'll know what's coming probably. But if you don't, <laughs> easy. Okay, so I'll see you in the next bit. Bye-bye.